in a way, yeah, yeah, I think there are a lot of DJs who kind of just stand there and will play records, big records, and put their hand in the air every 10 minutes and it'll be enough for people. That's fine. But um, for me personally, with DJing, I mean, the thing that satisfies me is to kind of, is to kind of re-challenge myself or to challenge or to challenge um, <laughs> or to challenge you know the audience a little bit you know I think it it can be easy I mean uh, someone once said that it's almost like when you have success it's almost like fishing in a barrel you know it's very easy to kind of have, get results and stuff and I, I I personally like prefer to make it a little more difficult for myself you know not to kind of like not to not 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 for it to kind of like turn into something really quite predictable or banal you know do you feel like a, a, one of these superstar DJs I don't feel like one no. but I, are you I don't I wouldn't even say if I was or if I wasn't I don't feel like one so I wouldn't naturally you know imply that I was you know far from it I mean I don't I mean yeah people have said that about me I'm like whatever you know if that's what people think people think I'm a superstar people think I'm rubbish if people think I'm amazing that's fine I really doesn't change how I feel about myself you know it doesn't change how I you know approach something either I don't walk into gigs feeling like a superstar you know put my hands in the air to milk the crowd or you know okay I try to like you know I definitely try to do things that will kind of excite the party But I don't think, you know... I don't like what? Not Nothing deliberate, you know, but just kind of... I think to just acknowledge that that we're kind of together, you know? Just that. But not in a sort of a... I don't know. I'm not naturally a kind of... Um, kind of a flamboyant person, you know, in that way. Or maybe that as as confident as people might assume you'd have to be you know what I mean to do that how old were you when you first started DJing uh, when I first started DJing in clubs um, 17 I think what was that like it's fun it's great I got you know I got to play my favorite records on a big sound system um, you know my friends were dancing I got given for my payment five pints of lager happy it's great you know? <laughs> it's brilliant when you're 17 that's 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 a lot you know i read somewhere that you had to sneak out of the house yeah yeah to <clears throat> i had to kind of um kind of uh yeah sneak out i wasn't really uh wasn't really allowed to go out and you snuck back in the night yeah in and out like a I don't know what that really, but just sort of, yeah, I just had to kind of just do it without my kind of uh, parents knowing. But did they did they catch you? Yeah, caught me, gave me a bollocking at times, you know, sort of thing. But it was, you know, sort of, they just didn't know what I was doing, really. They probably thought I was doing something pretty, uh, pretty awful, you know. I don't know if they were there and they heard it, but um, no, it was just, you know, just really kind of like, It just wasn't something that I think my parents kind of understood what I was doing, you know. Did they understand now? Yeah, they do now, yeah. yeah. It kind of took about four or five years ago, I played in Turkey, and I was on the front page of the national paper there. So they were like, oh, right, okay. So it's not like, it's not a joke thing you're doing. So, so you know, that kind of like, that kind of swung it for them a little bit, you know. Have they ever been to see you? Yeah, once. They came to Trash once, actually. It was pretty, um, it was pretty cool. It was good. It was interesting, you know. I think the thing was they they kind of like um, they didn't. I, I think the thing with parents is that they the things that they don't understand they fear, you know, and they can only you know if you say club to them they'll just remember what club was for them and club may not have been something that was a pleasant thing or a thing that was as as friendly as as it maybe for you know a, a different generation so you have to kind of bear that in mind you know but that's the kind of thing i think with most kind of with most kind of generation or kind of parent child kind of conferences just didn't 
understand what's, what's going. They might feel it's something awkward, you know. My parents still think that a that club is a secret society and that DJs talk in, in between the songs. S some clubs actually are like that. <laughs> so, yeah, there are some that are like that, definitely. But yeah, I mean, that's the thing. But in, in like the 70s, that's what it would have been, really, you know, definitely, definitely. You've started working as a producer producing rock bands. Um, yeah, how rock, <laughs> but maybe pop. alternative bands. Yeah. yeah. How did that come about? Um, you know what, it just came about really naturally. I was, um, I, obviously I've, you know, been doing remixing and things like that. Um, I think it was the Long, Long Blondes with the first band I went into a studio with, you know, to work with. And, um, and basically it was, I just, you know, really liked their music. I was like, you know, I heard some demos and I just was talking to them about like how some things would work in a song. And, and then someone suggested that we should go in the studio and um, and they sort of said, yeah, it should be good fun. We went in and and uh, and we did three songs in three days, and they were really happy with it. One of them was a song called Forward Babylon, which is still one of my favourite ones that that I've kind of of a song that I've worked with a band making. And um, and from there, they're like, oh, can you do the next one as well? I was like, okay, cool. And then that time, the mystery jets had heard it. They said, can you do the same thing with us? I was like, yeah, sure. Then the Claxons heard something, and then so I went in with them for a bit, and then sort of blah 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 blah, blah. and then later Pierce, you know, kind of. It just. But the thing is, the thing that like unifies it all is that all the bands that I work with, like I I know as friends, and I get on with, you know. So to me, it's not. It's not like um, you know, going into a studio. It's it, it's something that is, is an extension of our friendship, you know. It's not something that's like a a business kind of thing. We're going to make music or to try and discover something, or you know, it's it, it's got that kind of feel to it. That's why I, I don't really want to make production with bands uh, a kind of like a, a career thing, you know. Sort of like you know to have people like to have an agent to kind of ring up and get your gigs and get your work and stuff like that. I just want it to be something that. That's a natural thing that I do with people that I that I kind of get on with, and if we weren't in a studio, you know, we, we, we'd be somewhere else, you know, being creative or doing something exciting, you know. What's your style as a producer? Are you uh, bossy or? Uh, I'm kind of can't really reveal how I how I do things, but but I, it's a mixture of many things. I think I think you know, first of all, for me, the reason I work with bands because I like the way they sound. I don't like to kind of like change or to kind of make do anything far too radical if something already is good there, you know. I think a producer should kind of add, really, and never to kind of subtract. So I wouldn't, you know, I, I would never work with a band if, if I didn't like all their elements, you know.